Hello, friend. Thomas Manton the Fourth. I'm talking about prayer, continuing in that. And I want to say this. You have to remind yourself of the prophecies that God gave you. You have to rehearse and stir up the gift that's in you. You have to remember the promises of God and His Word, which can be claimed by everybody, but also with that and especially the words of the Lord that came that were true prophetic utterances either from him to you yourself through you back you know to yourself or from other people you know God wasn't joking he wasn't kidding around when he spoke he doesn't lie he's not a man that he should lie or a son of man that he can repent the only son of man was the one time uh, son of God, son of man was Jesus, and that was it, you know. And after that, <laughs> the resurrection, and now all the good things that God has planned and prepared for us belong to us. <laughs> it got dark because of the, the, the skies went overcast and the rain came. And wow, it's just weather is something else. So the Lord is uh, is is saying right now, we need to stir up the gift that's in us. We need to push forward into the joy and the peace and the presence of heaven that God has. We need to make a demand upon the anointing that's upon us and in us. We need to make a demand upon the Word of God that's written for us. We need to make a dem demands upon the prophetic words that were brought through others to us. And we need to, uh, you know, trust God. I've been listening to this uh, series of scriptures on audio version, on audio, of um, scriptures that that talk about trust and there's other ones about healing and prosperity and authority and joy and a few things like that peace but I, I could say more than more about that I want to make those too I want to make those uh, uh, I want to speak those and, and, and record those different topics and really uh, get them all over the world where people can be listening to the word. So we need to make a demand on that. But but I'm, I'm but I, I really feel to say that too that I feel this I feel a real strong unction on this that there are prophecies that God gave like one that we'd be very wealthy, one that our ministry would shake the world. You know, several, several, not not you know one or two. And. Uh, God said what he meant, and he meant what he said, and it's happening, you see. So whatever you're in the process of waiting for, I want to speak this to you like a, like a son of consolation, like a Barnabas kind of word, you know. Whatever you're waiting for that has not manifested itself yet, just hang on, my friend, because the Lord is in the process of making it a reality. There's a manifestation coming. There is a manifestation and the manifestation thereof coming forth for you. Because God did not write a new fairy tale or a story when he uh, spoke over your life of the plans he has for you. Jeremiah 29 11 says, I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord plans to prosper you and give you a great expected and great future. You like my blessings cup? It says, well, you can see it backwards, blessings. I saw this, I said instantly, I thought I need to have that. 
and uh, <laughs> I got my uh, chocolate protein shake in here that I make with my machine, you know, protein, like 30 grams, I think, are in here. One of these a day, folks. Got to have it. And the smart water, I hope this is good, but it sure beats being called stupid water. So if you're ever feeling a bit stupid, uh, you can't think right, just maybe get some smart water. I hope it helps. That's a joke. Okay. So the Lord is uh, he's really moving right now behind the scenes. He's been telling me that for... He's been telling me that for some time now. Since about June 12th, I had, I had a visitation of the Lord in the middle of June. And God said to me that... Um, he said to me that he he's he's working behind the scenes. He said, I want you to pray. I want you to pray for yourself. I want you to pray for my people. I want you to pray and, and declare that my promises are coming forth. I want you to pray over the next season. You know, we need we need clarity for the next season. Welcome everyone that's coming on, all my friends. God bless you. I love you so much. We need clarity for the next season. And share this. This is important. This is an important message. Everyone is important. But, you know, I feel to tell you this right now that you need to trust God. You need to trust God. You need to get, like, in the trust realm, in the joy realm. Keep worshiping Him. Keep believing Him. Keep trusting Him because what He said He's going to do, what He told you He's going to do and perform, it's really going to happen. How about that? It's really going to happen. In fact, it's just a matter of moments, seconds, hours. Oh, and, and days, a few days, where some great things are going to begin to happen. And I'm believing now as we cross over into the next month, tonight, I believe it is, tonight, yeah, 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 till tomorrow, into the next month, the next new month, that this uh, eighth month will be a time of birthing of new things. Like, you're, you're going to see, from August 1st, you're going to begin to see the forming of a new season. Now, you know me, I'm not into numbers and, you know, days and events and all that. You know, when it, ever, it's, when it was 777, seven, seven, people went nuts, Yeah. When it was 818, people went nuts. Oh, well, that means something. When it was 999, it meant something. I had a meeting on 999, September 9, 2009, and the host made it the 999 meeting, I thought. <laughs> and in that country where I was, that's like a, a, mean, a symbolic number of something, you know, important 999. And uh, I was like, okay. I just laughed about it, but then God just had me prophesy over the nation and bring some things forward and... You know, books were written out of that meeting, out of that series of meetings that I had that week. I was with four pastors and had a visitation of the Lord uh, in a hotel, a really nice hotel. We were sitting there for 55 minutes, I prophesied under the anointing. Now, they knew me in the restaurant. I was really a VIP there, it's kind of a five-star place. So they knew never to interrupt me if I had my eyes closed or if I was speaking. They wouldn't dare. Uh, I had that kind of honor and respect, you know. So it wasn't like I'm fighting all kinds of devils to try to stay focused. You know, it was just like a pure flow. And that was transcribed into a book that became 66 prophecies for that nation. Uh, we've sold out. We went out a reprint of that after several printings. And people have asked me really to redo it. And God, I have to get it, redo it, put it out and uh, re-release that. And uh, also 250 prophecies about healing the soul of the society. I want to also make that into a, a formative, tra a transformational uh, message and, you know, like, a, like an apostolic and prophetic thrust of, of, of how to see uh, societies healed. You know, th evil things in societies. God began to speak prophetically about healing the soul of a society. Soul is an affectionate term. Very good for a title. Very good, but it's very appropriate you know, very good for the thing because the soul is the inner part. 
The soul is the inward part. It's the mind, will, and emotions of even of cultures, rituals, you know, evils, corruptions, horrible things that are in people that are deep in certain societies and cultures and certain ethnicities and certain, excuse me, for certain um, groups of people in certain places because of many reasons that God wants to heal that. He wants to break that. The breaking of corruption in Africa and many other countries is ongoing. The breaking of corruption in America is ongoing. Now we see a fight over the city of Baltimore because this old clown messed with our president and the president doesn't take likely to that. And he looked at the place and thought, this whole place needs to be revamped and this old goat needs to get out of office. And, and I pray and prophesy that he will be defeated in the next election and we won't have to hear that guy's rantings anymore with his racist hatreds, you know, and, and, and things, you know, against the president who's doing great things and bringing great change. You know, uh, President Trump was the only one in recent history we've ever seen or heard about that wants to pump hundreds of billions of dollars, even a hundred billion was the first pledge and more, into inner cities of America to revitalize them. And in Baltimore, you have horrific conditions where rats run r around more than people. And, 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 and this people that have been in office for 30 years haven't done a cotton picking thing, haven't done a thing to fix anything. That speaks for itself, the conditions of things. Let the revitalization go on and then it becomes a new place and everyone will, will say afterwards or during, Woo, this is a new thing. I guess this president we have is a good guy. <laughs> Figure it out. And then, you know, I saw something the BBC was trying to uh, slander Ronald Reagan. You know, these demons that are in the media that are trying to stir up all kinds of nonsense to cause racial wars and hatred and strivings and all that and try to discredit anything that's white. You know, all this thing is going on behind the scenes and it's just a bunch of foolishness. I mean, did a, white, did a black person, you know, ask to be black when they were being formed? Was there a questionnaire they had to fill out? In the, in the ethereal realm before they were conceived in the mother's womb. Uh, you're going to be black-skinned or white-skinned or brown-skinned or yellow-skinned or red-skinned. Did the red-skinned and native Indian man, you know, ask to be the red man? The Native American, did the uh, yellow-skinned... This is what they, how they categorize people. It's really not so nice to call someone red, yellow, brown, black, or white. It's not really the greatest thing to do. But, you know, that's some people understand that. And I don't really like it myself. I think we should just call everybody like, you know, by their name and uh, by the content of their character. As Martin Luther King said, a great word, uh, people should be looked at on the content of their character, not the color of their skin. Bravo, man. That's right. Not, you know, white, black, yellow, red, brown. Hello. I'm getting into this by the Holy Ghost. And, uh. There's a deep work that goes on when God speaks. The first premise is you need to get yourself in line with what the Lord is saying to you. Your prosperity, your success, your abundance, your blood. Because when you're well, then you can help make others well. And then beyond that, the Lord wants to use you and me. And he's doing that greatly, obviously, evidently. We can see it happening all over the world, and the fruit of it is there in mass quantity, mass quantities. And, and uh, that's because he comes and touches us. So we're vessels of his no matter what. That's the first priority, my friend, that you remain true to the Lord and press forward and press into his presence and get his touch right now. I feel the presence of God right now. I just came out of a conference. I've been in a conference the whole last week, and uh, it was out of this world. It was historic. And right at the very end of the conference, uh, I had a moment with the Lord in the meeting that was just like, you know, amazing. I felt like the pot had been, you know, simmering and boiling like the whole week. And then at the very last, very, very last five, ten minutes of the, of the whole conference, there was an impartation given to me. What a great honor. What a great thing that happened there. It was historic. I'm telling you, I feel it. I feel it. It just came into me from heaven. 
and it's 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 kaba baba kato see I can it's moving it's tangible I had another visitation with it today it's like the way the Lord stood and appeared to me in this in this moment the way it happened and uh, there there was the laying on of hands and there was an impartation and and I just feel like that that's just reliving itself it's an eternal weight of glory and something that was added to me more I am very privileged. For that now we need to we get that by pressing into God yes God shows favor to people yes he does but there's a reason for that because we're serious about pursuing him if you're showing him a lack of days of gratitude and uh, you're not really praying okay this is my message here and you're not really praying and pressing into God and pressing forward in him and seeking him and crying to him and rehearsing the things he said and trusting him and believing him and knowing that he's going to do all that he said he was going to do, then, hey, what, what are you really doing? Father, bring conviction upon your people. I felt conviction. I tell you, when I had this visitation on June 12th, now it's going to August 1st in a few hours. I, I had this, I had this um, conviction hitting me. I felt like shaken up. I can't explain all of it. I felt really, and I rem and this, and I was I was reading, and I, I but also I was reminded of the scripture also because I know it by memory from heart, uh, from mind. You know, I memorized a lot of scripture. John sixteen, when he talked about the conviction of the Holy Spirit comes to reprove the world of sin, and conviction comes to convict people of of you know of things that need to be fixed, you know, for yourself and for the world and for the societies, as I was talking about. And all of that started to come to me, and I thought, conviction is not just a thing that comes to uh, a lost person so they get saved. It's also to check and challenge and cause leaders to get themselves, you know, to shake them up. To break everything that's complacent and wrong off. And all this stuff that happened and betrayals and situations and warfares and adversities and just break it all. Get rid of it all. Wow. So you can so you can rise up and walk as a conqueror, as a as a king, as a real warrior. I started something and I was speaking about this uh I think day before yesterday. The Lord spoke to me radical leadership and I have a title I want to make a book. I don't want to give the title away right now, but I have a better title than that. But it has to do with our kingdom needing, you know, radical people, radical people, radical leaders. And, and it's almost like a dichotomy, like or like a div division to say, you know, like a a, para a paradox, you know, like a contradiction almost to say, well, uh, the kingdom needs, but doesn't the kingdom have? Because the kingdom is the kingdom. Yeah, but people are in the kingdom, but a lot of people are not really working toward becoming all that God wants them to become and doing all that God has ordained them to do. And that's for me and you to be raised up to be great leaders, powerful, powerful servants and vessels of the living God, full of his might and glory, full of his spirit, full, filled with his anointing, filled with his fire and power. And it's not happening enough. You know, this new plague in the church called the seeker, the seeker craze. <laughs> Guys sitting on stools with skinny jeans, you know, talking about whatever. Oh, blah, blah. And then the new thing about, you know, just having talking heads on the platform instead of demonstration of the power. Now, I know there's a time to teach. I love to teach. I'm a teacher. That's obvious. I'm a teacher. I really am in the office of a teacher as well as in the office of the prophet. And I do pastor, of course, I have a lot of people that are under my covering and grace and they are connected with me and, you know, and all that. But I, I don't have like uh, a church location that I do like every, you know, Wednesday and Sunday. I think that will happen over in time. Uh, I think the Lord will have that at some point, uh, at least as a base of uh, operation. But I don't want to talk about that right now. But. But the Lord is, uh, is, is, is having me to teach and, and, and to prophesy. And, you know, the, listen. Whew. 
there's a time to teach, but there's a time for demonstration. And, I, and I'm believing God, and the Lord spoke prophetically. Here's another thing about a prophetic word I just received. This happened on Sunday night. Uh, after the event finished, we, 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 I was with another pastor there, a really great man of God, and the Lord spoke his name to me like three times during the week, and I went up to him. I said, the Lord said your, your name to me about three times this week, and I just wanted to come and say hi. And I said, this is what's on my mind, and I had a particular thing that I wanted to ask him to help me with uh, as far as some, some people to do some, some, some things. And, and that's what I had on my mind, but then he just started to get a word of knowledge and he got that glaze, that glory came over my sword. I was like, wow. And he said, what's going on with this? And you know, like in the physical body, is your health okay? Is what I said. I said, well, I, I mentioned a couple of things and then he just laid hands on me and began to pray. And I'm telling you, the glory came. And, and of course I was recording and he began to prophesy and he began to speak about, about instant miracles are gonna turn up in, in our ministry. And now this is something God's given me that gift for creative miracles. I mean, healing miracles, we say like instant miracles of healing. He said, I know you're flowing that already, but it's going to turn up even greater. And he said another thing, grace for connections with great, great men of God, great leaders, great people in the kingdom, uh, open doors and favor. And he said another thing, greater grace for strength and energy to travel to all the cities and all the countries that God wants to take you to. I was like, woo, this is good. I know why God spoke his name to me for that more than the other thing, because the other thing was like a natural thing that needs to be done, but this was more important. And he began to prophesy and also pray for healing and the organs of the body and strength and all that. And I feel it. I'm telling you, this is great. We need to be in the presence of God. I want to pray for you right now. Whatever you need healing in, be healed in Jesus' name. Whatever, wherever you need deliverance, you need some devils and some trouble and some affliction in your mental arena and mind and, and sphere of atmosphere that, that, that the enemy's done anything, be, let that be gone in Jesus' name. And let the word of the Lord come to you again. And I ask the Holy Spirit right now, I'm asking him right now, Lord, please, Lord, please, in Jesus' name, bring remembrance of the things that you said in your word and also prophetically when you've spoken to my precious friend, that they can rehearse those in their mind and say, you know what, there's another wind coming. Yeah, another prophecy was given there. It was about another wind of glory, another wave coming. It's coming. It's happening. And on and on. I recorded. I'm going to have it typed out maybe seven or eight powerful points in the prayer for healing and this thing about miracles. So, so guess what? Whatever's ailing you right now, I believe it to dissolve and go in Jesus' name. Whatever affliction, lightning is striking all around here, all around. Ooh. Whatever's afflicting you right now, let it be gone in Jesus' name. Wherever you're troubled in your soul and your emotions and you're feeling like disturbed or down or sad, in any way, discouraged in any way, let that whole bunch of nonsense be broken off your life now in Jesus' name. Amen. And you need to get more anointed, more full of his power, more full of the Holy Ghost, to overflowing and then, and then be raised up to be a, a great, great leader and great servant of God, a radical person, bold as a lion, not afraid of anything full of courage your gifting and talent is is great from god but i pray that god will breathe on that and also give you more ability more skill ability to get trained you know in the things of god and to operate in them but also in whatever business or or career you're doing in your life let it be increased and enhanced and upgraded for the realm of you becoming a kingdom financier a kingdom expander through even your fi your own financial life in Jesus name I'm so excited about this the need for radical leaders the Lord said to me tell my people I'm looking for people to be radical I need more I need to draft more people into my army when you're sowing a special seed I want you to get my book the benefits of excellence 40 diamond keys for your success and prosperity, this is really hot. And, the, and my DVD on the power to create wealth. If you're in North America, I'll gladly uh, mail this to you when you're sowing a seed online on thomasmanton.com or through the PayPal or the Cash App. 
a generous seed, love gift to our world missions. Please like obey the Lord, what he's telling you, and connect up with us. If you're out of the country, find a way to wire it to me. If you need my wire details to an account, just contact me and ask me. I will gladly provide you with those. Some people don't do because maybe they're not in America and they just say, well, I don't know if I can do that. I can't get the mail and all that. Find a way that you can wire me and I'll ship it to you, man. If you like bless our ministry, I'll get anything, any product I have, I'll get it to you. Uh, or find a way to get it to you digitally online and all of that. You know, I'll be glad to do that for you as you're supporting our world missions to help nations of the world become better because of the prophetic grace and power that's upon my life and ministry. In Jesus' name, lightning striking everywhere. So I think you saw that flash in my reflection here. <laughs> uh, so much we're doing, and I could talk a lot about that. So, But I just want to pray this blessing over you that God begins to encourage you, strengthen you, and raise you up to be his great leader because the world needs somebody great like you to arise and shine and become all that God wants you to be and you to, for you to have all that he wants you to have and for you to do all that he wants you to do and for you to become all he wants you to become. In Jesus' name, I'm Thomas Manton IV. Talk to you on the next segment. Love you much. In Jesus' name. Seize the moment. Make it a great day. Get ready for the greatest time. It's right here. The latter house will be greater than the former. And the Lord says, I'm doing a new thing and I'm pouring it out. And he said, remember not the former things, but behold, I'm doing a new thing and I'm making rivers to run in the desert. Even in dry places, I'm causing new things to flourish and flow for you, my precious son, my precious daughter. In Jesus name, get ready for the breakthrough now. In Jesus name, I'll talk to you really soon. Love you much. I'm looking to hear from you. And write to me, connect up with us on thomasmanton.com. See you there in Jesus' name. The Lord bless you.